Hi everyone, um, I'm going to use this video to show you how to deploy um, a community governance uh, using governance for Git uh, and how to conduct uh, polls um, on various issues. <clears throat> okay, so as a first order of business, let me mention that in the governance for Git repo, you're going to find a file called walkthrough.sh, which contains all of the material and steps that I'm going to cover in this video. So I'm going to open a terminal here and start with the first order of business, which is to install the governance for Git application. This is a Go application, so we're just going to use a standard workflow, like so. And I'm going to make sure that it has been installed. Um, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> um, now that we have the software ready, um, the first thing everybody needs to do, uh, regardless of their role in the community, whether you're an organizer or a community member, uh, you need to create um, your own identity. So your own identity is held in a Git repository, which you have to create uh, for the software to use. Um, each identity, every person, uh, requires two repositories, one public, one private. Uh, the public one holds your public credentials, as well as other information um, used by the software and your private repository holds your private credentials. So I will create a repository for myself and I'll call it Peter public. And I'm going to make sure that it's public. Uh, here we go. And then I'm also going to create a repository for my private credentials, petter-private. And I'm going to make sure it's private so only I can write to this repository or read from it. There we go. Now, um, this is what every member of the community needs to do. Now, because I'm also playing the role of the community organizer, in other words, the person who is going to deploy the community governance and I'm going to manage it and administer it, I also need to create a public and private repository for the community itself. And um, I'm going to do this and I'm going to call my community repository community-public. This would be the public repository of the community. This repository is going to hold the community's uh, public credentials as well as all community governance records um, for everybody to inspect and audit if need be. So this would be a public repository. I'm going to create it. And similarly, I'm going to create one private repository for the community, which is going to hold the community's um, private keys. Make sure it's private and create. Okay, so now I have two repositories, public and private for my own personal identity. And I also have a public and private repository for the community itself. Now I'll get back to the command line. <clears throat> and the first thing I need to do is to configure my command line client um, with the information about my, my personal uh, as well as the community repositories. So the configuration for governance for Git by default resides in uh, your home directory slash dot gov for git config dot json i'm going to open this file i have pre-filled this file so let me just explain what all the fields mean um <clears throat> i start by uh telling 
telling the client uh, what is the URL of the public governance repository. I tell it also the branch where I want the um, application to keep its um, data. I do the same thing for the private repository for the community. And I also uh, do the same thing for my personal um, public and private repositories. Um, so if you are not the administrator or the organizer for the community, you will not uh, be entering this uh, the information about the private community repository. Uh, but the rest, um, the rest of the config, the config should should uh, should look the same. Finally, uh, I need to tell the application how to authenticate into the private repositories that I'm uh, going to be accessing. And to do this, uh, I use this auth section, which basically says for this URL, use the following um, SSH credentials, which are found uh, in the standard location on my local hard drive. So I do this for the private community repository which I'm going to have access to because I'm the organizer. So if you're a community member, you you wouldn't have this, um, this line. Uh, and for my personal private repository, I'm also going to use um, the same SSH credentials. Okay. Uh, once we have this file, we can, um, we can close it and now we can use the governance for git um, application okay so the first thing we're going to do is we need to initialize my identity so this would be accomplished uh, using gov for git client the initialize identity command so enter and after a brief wait um, our identity is initialized so what happened um, i want to show you what happened if i go to my public and private repositories we'll see that they they have been populated so my public repository uh, is going to have my public credentials, which essentially um, holds some um, public signing keys. And similarly, my private repository will be populated with my um, private credentials. So I'm ready to use the system uh, um, as my identity has been initialized. Now, I'm going to put on my hat of the community organizer and I'm also going to initialize the community repository. So this is done using the command initialize governance. Um, very similar. And once it's ready, I'm going to also double check here that my governance repositories were both uh, populated respectively. Okay, now I'm ready to start using the application. So a, gov um, a community um, uses an abstraction of users and groups that is very similar to um, users and groups in a Unix system. Um, and as a community organizer, uh, I can add users, create groups, and add users to groups. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do this. So right now the community is uh, initialized. It has no users in it. So my first step would be uh, to create a user uh, for myself. So I, I execute governance for Git user add i pick a name for the user that i want to add um this name uh, can be anything you like as long as it is unique in the context of this community so i'm going to pick petter for myself 
and I need to um, specify the user's identity by providing the URL of this user's uh, public uh, repository, which in our case was GitHub Peter slash um, Peter public dot git and uses the main branch. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so this added the user to the community. And uh, if you're wondering uh, where the state is um, being updated, this would be in the community's public repository. Uh, now I, you can see that there's a new directory here, members that basically uh, codifies this new user. Um, in general, every user that's added to a community uh, automatically gets added to the group called everybody. So I can verify that the user was created by listing this group. So I will say governance for git group list and the name of the group that I want to list is group everybody. And I can verify here that there is one user called Peter. Uh, great. Um, now I would like to um, show you how to create a, a new group. Uh, perhaps we'll call it contributors that can um, hold the list of users that are contributing to the source code, for instance. I will say governance for Git group um, add the name of the group that I want to use. So contributors. Uh, again, you can pick any uh, name you like as long as it's unique in the context of the community. Um, so this command will create the group itself but the group will be empty, which I can verify by listing its contents. The group will be empty. And now I'm going to add the user Peter to this group. So I use governance for git member add which user, so user named Peter and I'm adding it to which group? Group named contributors. So this command should add Peter to the group contributors. And then I can verify that this happens by listing the contents of this group. Okay. Finally, um, I'm going to be interested, of course, in, in participating in voting. Um, and every user is associated with uh, account balances uh, with different kinds of tokens. And voting requires that I have voting credits. So as an administrator, I'm going to give myself some voting credits so we can try voting later on. Um, for this, I will use the command governance for git balance. Uh, this the command balance has lots of subcommands for dealing with user balances. You can read about them using the help. So in fact, at any point you can uh, you can put a dash h and figure out what subcommands are available. Uh, I'm going to use the command add balance in this case. So I'm going to say governance for git balance add. So. First, I specify which user am I adding to. This would be the user Peter. The key flag specifies the name of the, of the balance that I'm adding to. And in this case, I want to add voting credits. This particular balance, voting under underscore credits, is the balance that the system uses uh, uh, when users um, vote on um, polls or referendums, etc. 
And finally, using the value flag, I'm going to specify how many credits I want to give to this user, uh, Peter. In this case, I'll give myself 30 credits. Okay. Uh, done. And now I will just make sure that I actually have the credits. So I'm going to use the balance command again. I'm going to look at the help to remind myself. Oops, governance, forget. I will look at the help to remind myself what was the name of the command for reading my credits. It's the command get. I will look for the help of this command. So I need to specify uh, the type of balance and for which user. So I'm going to say I'm interested in the balance of user Petter and the balance is named voting credits. So let's see what I get. Okay, just as, as we expect, I have 30 credits available for voting purposes. Cool. So now that I have a balance and a user, let's uh, showcase how we can create um, a ballot and invite uh, people to vote and then we're going to uh, cast a vote. So <clears throat> the I'm putting my head of the um, community organizer again. So the community organizer can create um, a ballot using the ballot commands and subcommand open. So ballot open. I need to give a name to the ballot. Uh, and in this example, I'm going to call my ballot issue slash one. So ballot names can be any valid path name. Uh, all ballots have to have unique names. Um, they're all going to be kept in the governance records for eternity uh, for people to um, look at and um, look both at current and at past ballots. So you have to make sure that you pick sort of meaningful um, unique names. So this ballot is going to be called issue slash one. Um, I'm going to give it a title, which is a human readable um, description, a short description of the ballot. And I will also give it a longer human readable description. Um, you can put whatever text you like here. Uh, typically, it could be typically um, you might be uh, conducting a a vote where the the vote pertains to some particular issue or a pull request or something that has a link, and it's advisable that you put the link in the description so that people can find more information um, about the ballot. Uh, then. I need to specify who is eligible to participate in this ballot. And for this purpose, I specify a group uh, that can participate. So I'm going to say that the contributors group in the community can participate in this ballot. And finally, I need to specify what are the choices within the ballot that people can uh, vote on. I will create a ballot with only one choice and I'll just call it I1 uh, for issue one. Um, but you could also have uh, multiple, multiple choices uh, to vote on. So let's create the ballot. Okay, so now this ballot has been created and it's open for uh, users of the community to vote on it, upvote or downvote, and they can do so until the ballot is formally closed uh, by the organizer, which we're going to do later. So now that the ballot is open, I am going to, again, um, put my hat of just a regular member of the community, and I'm going to uh, cast a vote uh, on this ballot. So I'm going to use the governance forget command ballot. 
vote and I have to specify which ballot I'm voting on. So I, I provide the name of the ballot here, issue slash one. Then I specify the choice that I want to vote on. In this case, I won. And finally, using the flag strengths, I will specify how many voting credits I want to cast to choice I won in this ballot. So this could be a positive or a negative number in case you want to up or down vote respectively. Um, but the number of tokens that you cast, the number of voting credits that you cast must be available in your uh, voting credits balance. So let me uh, cast negative three votes for this particular uh, choice. And uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so this went through. Now I've cast my uh, vote, um, but my vote is not going to be reflected in the ballot tally until uh, the organizer of the community collects um, the currently outstanding votes. So putting my hat of the community organizer again, I will say governance forget ballot tally. Uh, meaning that, so the command tally uh, essentially has the, the effect of um, collecting all uncollected votes uh, that have been cast by community members and incorporating them in the current tally. So I need to specify what is the ballot that I'm tallying. So this would be issue slash one and let me make this window a little bit bigger and execute this command, okay? So the tally uh, went through successfully and you're going to get a JSON output that um, contains a lot of information you know, it has a description. It has a description of the ballot itself, as well as a description of all the votes that have been fetched so far, uh, as well as the um, uh, current tally. Uh, you will notice that the tally here is minus 1.7 rather than minus three, which is how much uh, voting credits we cast uh, to it. This is because um, our um, this particular ballot used the default balloting strategy, which uses quadratic voting. And so we have the square root of three as as what's actually being cast into the into this choice. Um, okay. So uh, in general, uh, when an organizer opens a ballot, they would keep it open for probably multiple days, they will notify members of the community that uh, balloting is 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 open. And it's uh, throughout throughout the period when the ballot is open, um, uh, the community organizer can occasionally run the tally command to collect um, outstanding votes and incorporate them in the final tally. Once uh, the tally, uh, the, the, the period for voting has expired, the organizer has to close the ballot, um, which means that no more votes will be accepted and the final tallies will be computed and frozen. And so this is done with the command governance for git, ballot, close, and then the name of the ballot, issue one. Um, oh, and let's look at the help of this command. Uh, we, there's one more parameter that I need to specify, summary. Summary specifies um, uh, an outcome 
that it's a parameter that you can pass to the balloting algorithm. Uh, it, it, oftentimes it's um, not necessary. Um, so we can just pass um, an empty string or we can just say, okay. Um, for some different kinds of uh, voting schemes, the summary parameter uh, it would be necessary and it would, it would be specified in the specific type of voting scheme um, that you're using. Um, okay, so this ballot was closed and the final tallies are printed out here. If at any point in time you want to view the current tally of an open ballot or the final tally of a closed ballot, uh, whether you're an organizer or just a regular community member, you can do so again using the ballot command. Let's look at the help. Um, using the subcommands show open or show closed. In this case, uh, we close the ballot, so we can use the show closed command to remind ourselves of the final tally for this ballot. So I can say, show me the tallet for the closed ballot code issue slash one. And this would um, give us a, a JSON representation of, of the final outcome. Um, this is it for now. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, make sure uh, to look around um, the various subcommands that are available uh, through the command line tools help. Um, they're all fairly well documented and um, describe all the functions that you can perform. There's quite a few more functions that I wasn't able to cover. Thank you.